Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna from Hasna's Not Me and today we're going to continue our discussion about the radial nerve and we're going to talk about the branches supply of the radial nerve along with a clinical that we'll discuss related to these branches all right so let's get right into it i'm going to make it quite simple for you i know that radial nerve can be quite confusing especially in uh, relation to its branches so it would be better if you guys draw with me and learn on the spot so overall first let's discuss what is the radial nerve going to supply in your entire upper limb divide the supply into two parts it has muscular supply means it supplies muscles and it has a cutaneous supply meaning it supplies the skin all right so what muscles does it supply and what part of the skin does it supply let's just get this out of the way so you understand the branches better the muscles that the radial nerve supply are all the extensor muscles as we discussed earlier of the upper limb all right so what are these triceps that is the muscle of the extensor compartment of the arm then we have the extensor compartment of the forearm what were those muscles we have the extensor carpi radialis longus we have the brachio radialis brachialis however to brachialis it only gives the proprioceptive fibers all right remember this as well then other muscles include others i'm just going to write others for a reason all right other muscles include the extensor digitorum the extensor carpi radialis brevis the extensor carpi ulnaris so all of the muscles that you are basically going to study in your forearm now let's talk about the cutaneous supply uh, of the radial nerve so the cutaneous supply of the radial nerve includes posterior cutaneous nerve or the supply to the posterior part of the arm now it's it's supplying the arm so we'll have to add a forearm as well so posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm and then we have the lower lateral side of the arm that is supplied by the radial nerve all right and finally we have the lateral three and a half digits of the dorsum of the hand not the palm of the hand we're talking about the dorsum of the hand an exception is the distal phalanges we've already discussed that now we know the cutaneous supply what we need to do do is arrange this supply in accordance with branches and try to understand which branch is given when all right because that can get quite confusing hence i'm going to explain it very simply so let's go ahead and talk about the branches so what happens is in the arm the branches of the radial nerve are divided into three parts part 1 are the branches that originate before the spiral groove part 2 is the branches that emerge in the spiral groove and finally the branches that emerge after the spiral groove all right so what are the, what are the branches that arise before the spiral groove meaning in the axilla this area which branches arise here so be before spiral groove we have muscular supply from the axilla is given to the triceps and we all know triceps have three head the part of radial nerve before spiral groove supplies the long and medial heads of the triceps got it along with this the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm is given as well before the spiral groove or in the axilla you can say so posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm all right so in the axilla or before the spiral groove you can see that three branches have been given off so let's stick it off our supply we've given the triceps supply we've given the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm arising before the spiral groove Now let's talk about what happens during the spiral groove. Which branches does radial nerve give while it is in the radial groove? The radial nerve will give supply again to the triceps. However, the lateral and medial head this time. And in addition to that, it gives the rest of the cutaneous supply, which is the posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm is given here, and the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm is given here. All right. So, as you can see here. we can take off the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm given inside the spiral groove along with the triceps muscles complete supply is done inside the spiral groove 
all right and then after the spiral groove what branches does what does it supply the radial nerve after the spiral groove arise a couple of branches which include supply to the muscles of right here the brachialis the brachioradialis the extensor carpi radialis longus so now we know that after the spiral groove in the lower lateral side of the arm this area the radial nerve will give supply to which muscles these are the extensors of the forearm so there are a couple of extensors of forearm it all gives supply to in the arm itself while the rest of the extensors of the forearm it supplies via its deep branch I really hope you understand that point. Hence, I've written these muscles here so you remember it well. The extensor carpi radialis longus, the brachioradialis, and the proprioceptive fibers to the brachialis are given after the spiral groove inside the arm. All right? Now we know how all of these areas are supplied. Let me go through it again. Before entering the spiral groove, the radial nerve supplies via the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. It supplies the skin of the arm in the posterior side. Along with that, two heads of the triceps are supplied, namely the long and medial head. Inside the spiral groove, it is supplying the posterior side of the forearm and the lower lateral arm. Via what branches? The posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the lower lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm. Along with that, it's giving muscular branches to two heads of the triceps once again, the lateral and medial head this time. Moving on, after the spiral groove inside the arm, it will supply the extensors of the forearm. These are the extensor carpi radialis longus, the brachioradialis and the brachialis. So all of these are supplied. What's left? This and this. We all know. These are supplied by the deep terminal branch of the radial nerve, also known as the pin, the posterior interosseous nerve, while this is supplied by the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Now you know very well what are the branches of the radial nerve, what do they supply, where do they supply, all right? So these are the various branches and I've tried my best to make it as easy as possible for you to understand the situation. Now let's talk about the significance of talking about these branches, a clinical of the radial nerve, which is extremely important, and it is known as the Saturday night's palsy, also known as the crutch paralysis. So what happens on Saturday nights? You usually have a nap, and sometimes people even fall asleep on rocking chairs. Once they fall asleep on rocking chairs, because their limbs are hanging on the sides, so you can see, if this is the rocking chair and a person is hanging his hand, you can see the pressure during his nap is being applied to what area? The spiral groove. So we know that if the radial nerve is damaged at the level of the spiral groove, what will happen? The branches that were supplying the various areas beneath this damage are going to undergo paralysis. All right. And what will be spared? Whatever the radial nerve supplied in the axilla will be spared. So let's talk about the easier terms. In the axilla, it supplied what? It supplied the triceps and it gave the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. Hence, the sensation in the posterior side of the arm and the triceps, meaning the extension of your arm is going to be conserved. But Everything beyond that is going to be paralyzed, which means what? The extensor of the forearm are going to be paralyzed. And what, what happens when the extensors of the forearm are paralyzed? Because the extensors of the forearm have the sole purpose of extending the wrist. So if there is nothing to extend the wrist, it will result in wrist drop. So Saturday night's palsy results in wrist drop. Why? Because the extensors, the ex muscles that extend the wrist are all paralyzed due to damage to the radial nerve resulting in wrist drop. What sensations will leave? Only the posterior strip of the arm, the skin being supplied will be spared. Other than that, the posterior skin of the forearm, the lateral side of the dorsum of the hand will lose sensation. 
So this is known as what? The Saturday night palsy or the crutch paralysis as clutches are also going to apply pressure to the radial sulcus. So that was all for the radial nerve. I really hope you understood the concept because that is my main purpose to somehow communicate the concept to you and concept is the most important part in gaining knowledge. So thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel.